The Lord said to Abram, Leave your country, your people, and your father's household, and go to the land I will show you. Genesis 12 verse 1. Hello, celestial seekers. Today, we dive into the beginning of a remarkable journey that shapes the foundation of the Israelite nation. The journey of the Israelites begins with a divine promise. God commands Abraham to leave his homeland and journey to Canaan, a land promised to him and his descendants. This promise marks the beginning of a covenant that will shape the history and identity of the Israelites. As Abraham obeys, he embarks on a path filled with trials and triumphs, ultimately leading to the establishment of a people set apart by their faith and obedience to God. Have you ever wondered what drove Abraham to follow such a daunting command? What significance does this ancient promise hold for us today? If you're intrigued by these questions, make sure to explore our other videos and join our channel, Celestial Chronicles, for more captivating stories from biblical history. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay updated with our latest content. The Exodus and the Conquest of Canaan The Lord said to Moses, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. Exodus 3 verse 7 after many generations, the descendants of Abraham found themselves enslaved in Egypt. This period of enslavement was marked by intense suffering and hardship. But God heard their cries for help and chose Moses to lead them out of bondage. This pivotal moment, known as the Exodus, is one of the most dramatic and defining events in Israelite history. Moses, a Hebrew raised in the Egyptian palace, encounters God in the form of a burning bush. God instructs him to go to Pharaoh and demand the release of the Israelites. Pharaoh's heart, however, is hardened, leading to a series of plagues that devastate Egypt. These plagues, from turning the Nile into blood to the death of the firstborn, demonstrate God's power and his commitment to freeing his people. Finally, after the tragic final plague, Pharaoh relents, and the Israelites are allowed to leave. They embark on a journey through the desert, led by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. However, Pharaoh soon changes his mind and sends his army to bring them back. In a miraculous event, God parts the Red Sea, allowing the Israelites to cross on dry ground and escape the pursuing Egyptian forces. The sea then closes over the Egyptian army, ensuring the Israelites' safe passage. The Israelites' escape from Egypt is just the beginning of their journey. They wander in the desert for 40 years, a time marked by both divine provision and human rebellion. During this period, they receive the Ten Commandments at Mount Sinai, a covenant that establishes their relationship with God and sets them apart as His chosen people. They face numerous challenges, from scarcity of food and water to conflicts with other groups. Yet, through it all, they learn to rely on God's guidance and provision. After four decades of wandering, the Israelites finally approach the land of Canaan, the land promised to Abraham. Under the leadership of Joshua, they prepare to enter and take possession of this land. The conquest of Canaan is a series of battles that the Israelites fight to reclaim their inheritance. The famous Battle of Jericho is among these, where the walls of the city fall after the Israelites march around them for seven days, as instructed by God. However, the story of the conquest is complex. Archaeological evidence does not always match the biblical narrative of a swift and total conquest. Some sites show evidence of destruction, while others do not. This discrepancy raises interesting questions about the nature of the Israelite settlement in Canaan. Was it a gradual infiltration and assimilation rather than an outright conquest? Furthermore, the biblical narrative emphasizes the moral and religious reasons behind the conquest. The Canaanites are depicted as a people whose practices are abhorrent to God, and the Israelites are instructed to avoid adopting these practices. This sets the stage for the ongoing struggle to maintain their distinct identity and faith amidst surrounding cultures. As we reflect on these events, several questions arise, how do we reconcile the biblical account with archaeological findings? What lessons can we learn from the faith and perseverance of the Israelites during this formative period? Join the conversation in the comments and share your thoughts on these intriguing questions. By engaging with these ancient stories, we can gain deeper insights into our own journeys of faith and discovery. The Merneptah Steel and Early Israelite Society Israel is laid waste, his seed is no more. Merneptah Steel, circa 1208 BCE one of the earliest pieces of evidence for the existence of the Israelites comes from an unexpected source, an Egyptian artifact known as the Merneptah Steel. This stone slab, inscribed around 1208 BCE, commemorates the victories of Pharaoh Merneptah. Among its inscriptions, it mentions Israel, marking the first non-biblical reference to the people who would become the Israelites. This steel provides a fascinating glimpse into the ancient world, revealing that a group identified as Israel was significant enough to be noted by the Egyptians. This evidence suggests that by this time, 
the Israelites were already established in Canaan, albeit in a relatively small and dispersed form. But what did their society look like? Archaeological discoveries paint a picture of early Israelite society that is quite different from the grand cities of their Canaanite neighbors. The Israelites lived in small, self-sufficient farming communities scattered across the hill country of Canaan. These settlements were modest, with simple houses and communal storage facilities, reflecting a largely egalitarian lifestyle. Unlike the Canaanites, who built impressive urban centers and monumental architecture, the Israelite settlements were humble, suggesting a focus on community and survival rather than grandeur. The material culture of these early Israelites also shows some distinct characteristics. For instance, their pottery was typically plain and undecorated, in contrast to the more ornate styles of the Canaanites. This difference in pottery styles helps archaeologists identify Israelite sites. Additionally, the absence of pig bones in Israelite settlements indicates dietary laws that set them apart from their neighbors, likely reflecting their religious practices. This early Israelite society was primarily agrarian. The people relied on farming and herding for their livelihood. They grew crops like wheat and barley and raised sheep and goats. Their agricultural practices were well adapted to the hilly terrain of their homeland, involving terracing and other techniques to maximize the productivity of the land. This connection to the land was deeply ingrained in their identity and their religious beliefs. Religion played a central role in shaping the identity and culture of the Israelites. They worshipped Yahweh, whom they believed had delivered them from Egypt and given them the land of Canaan. This worship was distinct from the polytheistic practices of their Canaanite neighbors. Early Israelite religion was likely centered around family and community altars, where they offered sacrifices and sought guidance from God. This practice would eventually evolve into the more centralized worship seen in later periods, but its roots were in these small, local communities. The archaeological evidence suggests that the emergence of Israelite society was a gradual process. It wasn't a sudden, dramatic conquest as depicted in some biblical narratives, but rather a steady development over time. This view is supported by the lack of widespread destruction layers that would indicate a swift and violent takeover of Canaanite cities. Instead, it appears that the Israelites gradually settled in the highlands, where they developed a distinct culture and identity. The mention of Israel on the Merneptah steel also raises interesting questions about the relationship between the Israelites and their powerful neighbors. How did this small, agrarian society manage to maintain its identity and autonomy in the shadow of the great empires of Egypt and Mesopotamia? What strategies did they use to navigate the complex political landscape of the ancient Near East? These questions invite us to consider the resilience and adaptability of the early Israelites. Their ability to carve out a distinct identity and society in a challenging environment speaks to their resourcefulness and determination. It also highlights the importance of faith and community in sustaining them through difficult times. As we reflect on the early days of Israelite society, we see a people deeply connected to their land, their faith, and each other. Their story is one of perseverance and gradual growth, laying the foundations for the rich and complex history that would follow. What lessons can we draw from their experience? How does understanding their humble beginnings help us appreciate the later developments in their history? Share your thoughts and questions in the comments. Let's explore together the intriguing and inspiring journey of the Israelites from these early settlements to their later achievements. The Habaru and the Late Bronze Age upheavals. They have come out against us as men do when they are desperate. Amarna Letters, circa 1350 BCE. The Late Bronze Age was a time of significant upheaval in the ancient Near East, marked by the decline of powerful empires and the rise of smaller groups. Among these were the Habaru, a group often mentioned in Egyptian records and the Amarna Letters. These texts, written around 1350 BCE, describe the Habaru as a disruptive force, challenging established powers and causing unrest. The term Habaru, or Apiru, appears in various ancient sources, referring to people who lived on the margins of society. They were often seen as rebels, mercenaries, or outcasts. Some scholars believe that the early Israelites may have been connected to the Habaru, suggesting that the biblical stories of the Israelites' ancestors might overlap with these historical accounts. During this period, the great powers of the Late Bronze Age, such as Egypt and the Hittite Empire, were experiencing significant internal and external pressures. These included economic difficulties, invasions, and social strife. The weakening of these empires created a power vacuum, allowing smaller groups like the Habaru to assert themselves and seek opportunities. The Amarna Letters, a collection of diplomatic correspondence found in Egypt, provide a fascinating window into this tumultuous time. They include complaints from Canaanite city-state rulers to the Egyptian pharaoh, describing the havoc wreaked by the Habaru. These letters depict the Habaru as a constant threat, 
challenging the authority of local rulers and destabilizing the region. One of the most intriguing aspects of the Habru is their possible connection to the early Israelites. The similarities between the descriptions of the Habru and the biblical accounts of the ancestors of Israel are striking. Both are portrayed as living on the fringes of society, often in conflict with established authorities, and both eventually form a distinct and influential group. The geopolitical landscape of the Late Bronze Age was incredibly complex. The decline of the major empires led to significant shifts in power and population movements. This period saw the collapse of many long-standing city-states and the emergence of new groups who would shape the future of the region. The Israelites, like many others, navigated this changing environment, gradually establishing themselves in the highlands of Canaan. The story of the Habaru and the Late Bronze Age upheavals helps us understand the broader context in which the Israelites emerged. It illustrates the fluid and dynamic nature of ancient Near Eastern societies, where shifting alliances, migrations, and conflicts were common. This context challenges the notion of a straightforward and isolated origin for the Israelites, suggesting instead a more interconnected and multifaceted process. These upheavals also highlight the resilience and adaptability required to survive and thrive in such a volatile environment. The early Israelites, possibly starting as a marginalized group like the Habaru, managed to carve out a place for themselves in the changing landscape of Canaan. Their story is a testament to their ability to adapt to new circumstances and forge a collective identity. Understanding the role of the Habaru and the broader Late Bronze Age context adds depth to our knowledge of Israelite origins. It shows how historical, social, and economic factors intertwine to shape the development of new groups and cultures. The challenges and opportunities presented by the collapse of older powers provided a unique backdrop for the emergence of the Israelites. As we delve into this period of history, several questions arise, how did the Israelites, possibly related to the Habaru, navigate the complex political landscape of the Late Bronze Age? What strategies did they use to establish their identity and secure their place in the region? And how do these ancient upheavals continue to influence our understanding of early Israelite history? Join the discussion in the comments below and share your thoughts on these intriguing connections. By exploring the multifaceted origins of the Israelites, we gain a richer appreciation of their history and the broader forces that shaped their journey. Settlement Patterns and Cultural Shifts So Joshua took the entire land, just as the Lord had directed Moses, and he gave it as an inheritance to Israel according to their tribal divisions. Joshua 11 verse 23 When the Israelites finally entered Canaan, they faced the monumental task of settling into the land and making it their home. This process of settlement and the accompanying cultural shifts are critical to understanding the development of the Israelite identity and society. The transition from nomadic life in the desert to a more settled existence in Canaan was not an overnight change but a gradual and multifaceted process. Archaeological evidence shows that, around the 13th century BCE, new villages began to appear in the highlands of Canaan. These were not the grand cities of the Canaanites but modest, humble settlements that reflected the Israelites' agrarian lifestyle. These early Israelite villages were typically small, consisting of a few families living in simple houses built from local materials. The houses were often arranged around a central courtyard, fostering a strong sense of community and shared responsibility. This layout contrasts with the more hierarchical and fortified Canaanite cities, indicating a different social structure focused on equality and cooperation. Farming was the backbone of these early Israelite settlements. They grew grains like wheat and barley and cultivated vines and olive trees. The highland terrain required innovative agricultural techniques, such as terracing, to prevent soil erosion and maximize arable land. These farming practices not only sustained the community but also reflected their deep connection to the land. One of the most telling aspects of these settlements is the distinct material culture that developed. Israelite pottery, for instance, was plain and utilitarian, quite different from the ornate and decorative styles of their Canaanite neighbors. This simplicity in their material culture may reflect their values and lifestyle, focusing on function and necessity over luxury. Another significant cultural shift was in dietary practices. Archaeological excavations show a notable absence of pig bones in Israelite settlements, aligning with the dietary laws later codified in the Torah. This distinction from the surrounding Canaanite culture was likely a crucial aspect of maintaining a unique identity and adhering to religious commandments. The process of settling in Canaan also involved adapting to and sometimes adopting certain aspects of the existing Canaanite culture. This cultural exchange is evident in various artifacts and practices that show a blend of Israelite and Canaanite influences. For example, some pottery styles and agricultural techniques were borrowed from the Canaanites, demonstrating a pragmatic approach to survival and integration. 
religious practices played a central role in this cultural shift. The Israelites built simple altars and worshipped Yahweh, following the traditions passed down from their ancestors. These practices were distinct from the elaborate temple rituals of the Canaanites, focusing instead on community worship and personal devotion. Over time, these religious practices would evolve and become more centralized, but in the early settlement period, they were integral to daily life and community cohesion. As the Israelites settled and grew, the concept of tribal divisions and land inheritance, as described in the Bible, became a significant organizing principle. Each tribe was allotted a specific territory, and this division of land helped maintain social order and a sense of belonging. These tribal territories would later play a crucial role in the political and social structures of the Israelite kingdom. The gradual settlement of the Israelites in Canaan was a complex and adaptive process. It involved not only the physical act of building homes and cultivating land but also the cultural and religious integration necessary for forging a cohesive identity. This period laid the groundwork for the later development of Israelite society, with its unique blend of traditions, values, and innovations. Understanding this settlement process raises several questions, how did the Israelites balance the need for cultural identity with the practical realities of adopting useful Canaanite practices? What role did religion play in unifying these early communities? And how did the transition from nomadic to settled life influence their social and political structures? Engage with these questions in the comments and share your thoughts. By examining the early settlement patterns and cultural shifts, we can gain deeper insights into the foundations of Israelite society and the enduring legacy of their early experiences in Canaan. The gradual transition from Canaanites to Israelites. And the people served the Lord all the days of Joshua, and all the days of the elders who outlived Joshua, who had seen all the great work that the Lord had done for Israel. Judges 2 verse 7. The transformation from a Canaanite culture to a distinct Israelite identity was not a sudden event but a gradual process influenced by various social, religious, and cultural factors. This transition period is essential for understanding how the Israelites emerged as a unique group with their traditions and beliefs. Initially, the early Israelites were indistinguishable from the Canaanites in many ways. They spoke a similar language, used similar pottery styles, and lived in comparable dwellings. However, over time, several key differences began to emerge, marking the Israelites' shift away from their Canaanite origins. One of the most significant aspects of this transition was the change in religious practices. While the Canaanites worshipped a pantheon of gods, the Israelites were devoted to Yahweh, the one God who had delivered them from Egypt. This monotheistic belief system set them apart and became a cornerstone of their identity. Early Israelite worship was simple and community-based, centered around altars and open-air sanctuaries rather than the elaborate temples of the Canaanites. The biblical narratives emphasize the importance of maintaining purity and avoiding the idolatrous practices of the Canaanites. Stories of figures like Joshua and the judges highlight the ongoing struggle to uphold these religious distinctions. The Israelites were continually reminded of their covenant with Yahweh, which required them to reject the gods of their neighbors and adhere to the laws given to them. Archaeological evidence supports the notion of a gradual transition. For example, while some early Israelite settlements show clear signs of Canaanite influence, such as in architecture and pottery, there are also distinct differences. Israelite settlements often lack the monumental architecture typical of Canaanite cities, reflecting a simpler, more egalitarian social structure. Additionally, the dietary evidence, particularly the absence of pig bones, indicates adherence to dietary laws that would later be formalized in the Torah. Cultural practices also evolved during this period. The Israelites began to develop unique customs and traditions that differentiated them from the Canaanites. These included new forms of social organization, such as the tribal system, which divided the land among the twelve tribes of Israel. This system not only facilitated the distribution of resources but also reinforced a sense of collective identity and responsibility. The role of oral tradition and storytelling was crucial in this cultural shift. The stories of the patriarchs, the exodus, and the conquest of Canaan were passed down through generations, reinforcing a shared history and common values. These narratives were more than just historical accounts, they were a means of instilling a collective identity and moral framework. The laws and commandments, as recounted in the biblical texts, provided a blueprint for how the Israelites were to live in their new land, distinct from their Canaanite neighbors. Another factor in this transition was the external pressure from surrounding nations. The Israelites were often in conflict with neighboring groups, such as the Philistines, Moabites, and Ammonites. These conflicts reinforced their need to unite and maintain their distinct identity. 
The stories of the judges, who rose to lead Israel during times of crisis, illustrate the importance of strong leadership and communal solidarity in the face of external threats. As the Israelites settled into their new homeland, they also began to develop a more complex social and political structure. The period of the judges eventually gave way to the establishment of the monarchy under Saul, David, and Solomon. This development marked a significant shift in Israelite society, from loosely connected tribes to a unified kingdom. The centralization of power and the construction of the temple in Jerusalem under Solomon's reign further solidified their distinct identity. The gradual transition from Canaanites to Israelites was a multifaceted process involving religious devotion, cultural innovation, and social restructuring. It was a period of both continuity and change, where the Israelites forged a new identity while retaining elements of their past. This transformation laid the foundation for the rich and complex history that would follow, shaping the destiny of the Israelite people. Reflecting on this period raises several intriguing questions. How did the Israelites balance the need for cultural and religious distinctiveness with the practical realities of living among other peoples? What role did external pressures play in shaping their identity? And how did the early experiences of settlement and conflict influence the later development of Israelite society? Join the discussion in the comments below and share your thoughts on these fascinating aspects of Israelite history. By exploring the gradual transition from Canaanite to Israelite, we gain a deeper appreciation for the resilience and adaptability of this ancient people.